Greeting from Africa. Hello everyone. Today we are going to show you exactly what gear we have with us for our 10 year cycling tour around the world. With this setup, we can live comfortably from minus five till plus whatever. And during the last 14 months, we have been on the road from Hello. Finland to Gambia here in Africa. And we do apologize about the background noise. We are outside, nothing to do about that. So let's start by me showing what I carry on my bike. I will be the cameraman then. Starting with my front right pannier, we start with the serious stuff, which is our first aid kit. We try to be prepared for everything because we might be somewhere where a hospital is really not available. So we have painkillers, we have strong antibiotics and all kinds of pills and medication for stomach flu and just anything you can imagine. Also, of course, alcohol to clean wounds and bandages and tapes. And we pack all of our creams and our pills in these plastic boxes. Because if you don't, the cream tubes will bend and fold and crack and you will have cream everywhere and the pills will escape from the packaging and you will have pills everywhere. And we also have uh, malaria quick tests. Then I have some papers. These are our vaccination documents. I have a notebook, some postcards to send to you, and a book that I never have time to read. Another thing I don't need so often is my high visibility vest, but I still carry it in my front pannier. If suddenly we cycle in the dark, I do want to wear it. Then we have some supplements, vitamin B, zinc. We have aloe vera gel for sunburns and just in general good for the skin. And mosquito repellent, absolute must when you are in malaria and dengue fever area to have a good mosquito repellent. My deodorant, again packed in plastic because everything that can leak will leak and the deodorant might definitely melt in this temperature. We have a SteriPen. This is the SteriPen Classic 3, which we use to sterilize our drinking water. It's a UV light and you treat your water half a liter or one liter at a time. It kills bacteria, viruses and parasites, but it doesn't, of course, filter the water. So if the drinking water is cloudy, then this is not the best tool. Otherwise, it's very convenient. We really love the concept of the SteriPen, but unfortunately, this is not that reliable. There's some connection issues and maybe every other time it works and every other time it doesn't but still we have always managed to treat our water so far then we have my underwear this is definitely more underwear than i need but i rather be sure that i always have something clean to wear than to run out so our hairbrush which is broken but this is just the floppy like brush part from a normal big brush so it's very small and very, very light. We can fix this with some duct tape, maybe. Good as new. I have my kuksa, kosa. You have seen all of our vlogs, you have seen it before. It's still not done. It's my traditional wooden cup that I'm still working on, but I haven't oiled it yet, so I'm not using it. That's why it's packed in here. Then we have a battery pack from Raw Power. We actually have two of these. It's a 26,800 milliampere hours battery pack. We can charge these with our solar panels. It can take maybe one full day to charge. And then we have enough battery to charge our cell phones a few times, some camera maybe before it's empty again. In my back right pannier, I have some of my winter clothes, which of course I'm not using at the moment in Africa. I have two merino base layers, one pair of Aklima warm wool leggings and one pair of Devolt Expedition merino leggings. One pair of cheap generic fleece gloves, first glove and then as a second glove I use my sweet protection merino fleece mitten. So this is a very warm combination and then I have also a waterproof mitten to wear on top. So with this I can cycle in minus temperatures. These are some of the warmest and comfiest mittens I have ever worn. It's marina on the outside and uh, fleece on the inside. Also in this bag I have a backup hard drive. It's a transcend hard drive like our other current hard drives. And I have packed this one separately from our other hard drives so that in case something happens to the bag with the other hard drives, if they get smashed or whatever, we still have some material left. Here is also a dress 
that I don't really get occasions to use my Aclima Warm Wool hoodie which is super warm and really lovely with this high color. I wore this one a lot in Europe when we were cycling in Central Europe in the winter time. And again from Aclima, they're double wool. This unfortunately doesn't have a hoodie, but if I pair it with something with a hoodie, it's okay. This has like a net inner layer and then a warm wool outer layer. So I think it's some of the warmest clothing you can find. <laughs> I do sometimes use it as a mid layer, but I think it's at its warmest if you put it straight towards your skin. And I pack it all in a lightweight backpack from Quechua. Acts like a packing cube. And I pack the hard drive inside the mitten for some extra protection. I have cut some holes here to make this a little bit more breathable. Then my winter trouser is Endura's Humvee 2 trouser which is super duper comfortable it's quite warm it's wind resistant water repellent but but it does have this seam in the butt which is really hurting me when I'm cycling so I really can't cycle in this cycling trouser but as an outdoor like at the campsite kind of pant it's really brilliant for everything except for cycling which is a bit ironic since it is designed for cycling and then my cycling trouser from Kraft I really don't use these ever uh, I prefer to cycle without them but I still keep them because if we are in a situation where we need to cycle really long distances many days in a row or something I think I might want to use them I have a full size travel towel from Cuckoo I got this as a re-gifted gift, so if I would select myself, I would maybe select a smaller one. But still, I mean, it packs up quite small, so the size is really not a big issue and it's very comfy to have a big towel. Then my computer and my computer charger. We need these for editing and for organizing our pictures and files and things like that. So I pack it in the back of the pannier because it's more secure and safe behind my clothes and because it's good to put the weight towards the frame. And then the charger. Fun fact, this is the only gadget we need grid electricity for. All of our other electronics we can charge with our solar panel, but this one we can't. We have one can of pepper gel because pepper spray, which we also have, you cannot use inside the tent, then you get affected yourself. So in case, hopefully not, we ever need to defend ourselves inside the tent then the pepper gel would be the way to go last one in this bag is my sleeping bag it's a marmot face 20 it's lightweight quite warm i have slept comfortably in this in minus five without any extra layers in my back left pannier I have some more winter clothes that I don't really use. I have a hoodie from Quechua, it's a synthetic, quite thin but quite warm hoodie and I can use it as a mid-layer or if it's not too cold as a jacket. And my main jacket is Kletarnus and Hagal with the hoodie. It's a marina synthetic mix and it's quite warm and really comfortable but it's not very windproof so I do have a rain jacket to wear as like an outer layer in case it's cold or windy or it can stand alone and it's a nice jacket for exercise like for cycling because it breathes very well then i have some hand knit and woolen socks that i probably stolen from some family member sorry and a woolen scarf this is not a necessity but it's very practical because it's quite big but it's also very thin but still warm so I have used it as a blanket if it has been cold. I have used it as a headscarf, as a towel, as a skirt, almost anything. And it packs very small. Also I have two pairs of shorts that I can't really use here in Africa. So they are also packed in my bag together with two pairs of leggings. These are synthetic running tights, but I have also used them as a synthetic base layer. And then uh, mid-layer leggings, this is warm piece, Polartec, super, super warm, and I have it in a size large, so it's very, very comfortable. But obviously this is for winter time. 
My swimsuit is also packed in the back together with my belt that I don't currently need. Then I have an emergency blanket from Decathlon. This is actually a bag. I don't know if it's called emergency BV or something, but this is big enough for two people. I have two bags of uh, emergency food. This is uh, just a protein powder we got for free. And another pack of postcards. These are old postcards, which we are not sending out anymore. I pack these ones towards the back so that they don't break. Another emergency food we carry is this can of chia seeds. Chia seeds are really nutritious and you only need to soak them in water to be able to eat them. So we found it a good emergency food. In this box we have action camera mounts. We pack them in this box to keep them from like getting smashed and broken. Then we have a Zoom voice recorder. We don't use this that much and we could do without it to be honest. But it is nice to have some time to do a voiceover or maybe at some point if we want to do some interview or something. So we have still decided to keep it as part of our kit. In this bag I have the windscreen for the Zoom recorder, some lens cleaning cloths, some memory sticks for backup and some tampons. I also have another box of tampons because tampons are not that easy to find here in Africa. In the villages, for example, in the small shops, they don't have them. So whenever I find a shop that does have them, like a big supermarket or a petrol station, then I buy a pack just not to run out. I have two more bags of like electronic knickknacks, another action camera mount, a mount for smartphone. And that's basically this bag. In another one of these bags, I have our battery charger. So this is for our rechargeable batteries, but we can also charge even our camera batteries with it. So it's very useful. I have the charger for action camera remote control, some charging cables, more rechargeable batteries. And these bigger rechargeable batteries are specifically for our headlamps. And this is a Nightcore battery charger. And with this one, we can also charge something else like our phone from these batteries. So it's like a great spare battery pack. And we have an adapter to connect our computers to a cable internet in case there's no Wi-Fi. The last bag of electronics in my left rear pannier are our hard drives. Originally, we bought two terabyte rugged hard drives from Lassie, but one of them broke completely and we are afraid this one will also fail soon. So we switched to Transcend. In this bag I have three hard drives. One 2 terabyte hard drive with our footage from Europe and Morocco. And the same footage is on this Lassie, so it's like a backup. And then the rest of our Africa footage is on this Transcend hard drive. As you remember, our second backup is in my other bag. So altogether we carry 8 terabyte of hard drives. In fact, these are all getting full. <laughs> Then something that we should be using, we are not using at the moment, are silk sleeping bag liners. Payment has one from Sea to Summit. I have one from some generic brand. Mine is starting to break, but Payment's is not. In general, I would really recommend to use a liner. Silk liners are incredibly comfortable and they keep your sleeping bag clean, so I don't see any reason not to use a liner. And here in Africa, of course, we usually don't need our down bags, so we can sleep only with the liner as a sleeping bag. As you have noticed, we carry our winter gear because we are on a long tour and we want to be able to live comfortably in any climate that we need. Only if we go for an actual winter trip in like over minus 10, we will maybe swap some equipment, but other than that, we like to always cycle with everything that we need and not send packages or always back and forward depending on the country we are in. On that note, here's my down jacket. It's a wrap Electron jacket and I'm very happy with it. It's a good cut for me, it's very comfy, it has a hoodie and it's warm enough. On to my front left pannier. This is my rain jacket, Payment has the same one. It's just a very simple, cheap jacket from Decathlon. We originally brought super technical, lightweight jackets, but they just wore out immediately. And because we need to be able to wear this as an outer layer and not only as a rain jacket, we needed something that will last. So that's why we chose this ones in the end. It's waterproof, it's quite light and it packs into its own pocket. So it's a good shell layer for us. Then the clothes I'm using at the moment, this is a cotton trouser we had made in Senegal. 
and I am quite happy with it. I need to wear long trousers most of the time because of sun and because of mosquitoes and also for cultural reasons I should always cover my knees. So that's why at the moment I'm not wearing any shorts, only long trousers. I also have a technical long trouser. This is from Outdoor Research. It's a windproof fabric and it dries really, really quickly. Also, this light color was really a lifesaver in Sahara when even a little bit of color makes it so much hotter. But other than that, it's really not my favorite trouser. It's practical sometimes. Then I have this Merino t-shirt I'm wearing. I don't wear it that often again because I need my arms covered from the sun. I have this cotton shirt with a bit longer sleeves. So I have been wearing this a lot. And also this cotton shirt with full length sleeves is what I need to wear most of the time while cycling and also in the evenings, for example. The trouser I'm wearing, we got in a secondhand shop here in Gambia. The fabric is super thin, which makes it so comfortable because it's not very hot. I think I need to make a decision and cut one pair of trousers because the four pairs I have now, I think it's a bit too much. We have leather saddles, which means that we do our best to cover them from moisture and rain. So we made these saddle covers ourselves from a really thick and really waterproof fabric. This one I can use also while cycling. I think the thinner ones will wear out quite quickly. Here I have some travel documents. We like to spread them out in different bags so that in case some bags get stolen or destroyed or something, we will have something to prove our identity. In this bottle we have some massage oil for like muscle pain and sore legs. And this is our toiletry bag where we have our toothbrush and things like that. One thing we don't have here at the moment is our soap. We have a small plastic like lunch box with our soap in it, but it's not with us at the moment. Then here I have my pee funnel, which looks like this. It's from a brand called Freelax. If it's unsafe for me to pee sitting down or if there's no privacy, then I can use this one to pee standing up or even to pee in a bottle. That one I have never tried, <laughs> but we might end up in a situation where I do need to be able to pee in a bottle and possibly this could save the situation. We have an extension cord for the times we need to charge our electronics from the grid. So even if there's only one plug, we are able to charge at least four of our gadgets at the same time. This bag is our spice bag. We really like cooking and we like good food. So we have a lot of spices and we carry most of them in these Nalgene bottles. Someone might think this is a lot of spices, but we live on the road. I usually carry most of the food on my bike, so that's why my front panniers are like less full than payments. So for example, here is a bag of chana dal. So we actually right now are soaking some chickpeas over there on Pema's bike. We find dried beans and lentils quite good food to eat on the road. We can soak them in one of our bottles and then cook them in the evening. In this bag again some more food. I have cabbage, onion, zucchini, ginger and some random veggie. I don't know what. I think it has gone bad. And that's the last one of my panniers. Okay, my bag doesn't want to stand anymore. So that's the last one of my panniers. These are my shoes. Just a very simple cotton shoe. And the sole has come off a little bit but Payman fixed it and they also got a hole on the toe, so payment fixed that one too. I really don't like wearing shoes, but the reason I have these ones is because they are wide enough for my toes to move around. In my handlebar bag, the main thing I carry is our Sony a7 III camera, which Paymon is recording with now, and he also has a red microphone connected to it. So the camera comes here. I have made a place for it with this foam. Then I put this fabric over the camera to protect it from dust. Then I have our wallet, and in this wallet, we don't carry any cards or anything because this is the wallet we actually use. I also have a Voltec battery pack, a Sony action camera, a Luminite Compass R headlamp and my phone. In this small box I carry our memory cards. I have lined it with some foam. My headphone, singular because you see it, the other one. I have some of my cards and here in the net bag I have my passport and some other documents a pen and my mp3 player my compass from silva which also has a thermometer 
and in one of my side pockets I carry my pepper spray and a small brush to clean our tent zippers. The zippers are often the first part to fail of a tent so when we are in sandy areas like we are right now we try to brush them every day so we don't get so much sand stuck in the zippers because that really wears them out. In my basket I have my hat, it's from Decathlon, a cheap one, it works, it's not the best. I think hopefully I can get a straw hat for my birthday, I don't know. Mm. I have <laughs> I have sunscreen and my sunglasses. Like payments, these are also from Decathlon and they really fit my head nicely. They keep the sun out also from the sides, so I'm very happy with them. I have a light waterproof saddle cover and this is enough for condensation, but I wouldn't trust it if it was actually raining. And again, mosquito repellent. You never have too much mosquito repellent. This bottle is our bidet bottle which we use instead of toilet paper. Especially when we cycle, we like to clean ourselves with water because if you use paper, you really don't get clean and then it gets really yucky. Here I have my knife. And there is space here to carry food or fruit or something. So the next one is my bicycle. I have the same backpack as Matilda. Cachua from Decathlon. Here I have a leggings from Aklima. It's a warm wool, 100% merino. I'm pretty happy with it, though I haven't used it so much. These are the sport compression socks. I use them sometimes. Here I got the 100% merino leggings from Aklima. It's a warm wool base layer. My next leggings are again Aklima. They call it wool shell. It's almost wind stopperish. It's really good and very warm. Here I got the Enduro Humvee trouser. I'm a little bit more comfortable with cycling with this trouser than Matilda. But still these seams here, they're a little bit annoying. But all over, it's really a good trouser. This one goes there. Here's our toolbox. We carry any tool almost you can imagine. We can almost disassemble and assemble the bicycle just with the tools we have. Connex chain tool, spoke tensioner, sprocket removing tool, allen key for removing the free hop, grease, and many other small things. I leave it in a front pannier so it's in a handy place if we need it. This is one of our repair kit. It has a thin nylon thread, pretty thick waxed thread, some spongy rope, zips, buckles and this is a leather stitching tool and needles and things like that so whatever happens to any of our equipments we can fix them permanently high visibility vest it's really good to have it for a night cycling this is from black roll for massaging the back muscles or legs it's really really good thing and very light my woolen socks and we have a sport woolen socks and they are now insulating our water bottles so our water keeps cool for a longer time in a hot temperature in Africa. This is a liquid for my contact lens. This is for a shower. It's really good. The micro floor pump from Luzune with a gauge. It's a very, very good pump. We really like it. We highly would recommend this one. I just put it close to the frame. This is my wooden cup called Kuksa in Finnish language. It's almost done, but I, I still need to sandpaper inside of it. Here we have a three different titanium pods from Tox. We are really happy with these. This one has a bale, which is fantastic. Also, I can put a bale if I want to. Very light, very durable. They go inside of each other, but they don't really stay that good there. And of course the leads. And our small wooden cutting board. And this is one spoon. So these ones also, they go on top. And these are the same kind of waterproof covers for the brook saddles. The next is my rare left pannier. Here we have some spongy cord for fixing the tent pole if it's needed. And some other rope and more spongy cord. And some velcro and 30 meter of paracord. I really like to have a rope, I have to say. This is a chain loop from Connex. I wrap it around the plastic bag and I put it in the bottom of the bag always. So if it leaks, in case it doesn't go through to everything. And the next one is a linseed oil. This can work as a Loctite. Also, we will put it on outer layer of our Kuksa wooden cups when they are done properly. Here there is some uh, fabric and some piece of leather. 
I need to make a sheet for my knife. I haven't made it yet, but yeah. That one goes on the bottom of the bag. Extra tire, Schwoble Marathon Supreme. Pretty light and yeah, we haven't used it yet. But just this is emergency tire in case. Here I have my passports and some bank cards. Two metal files, I always carry them. They've been very, very handy for us actually. Shaver and the charger for it. Then I have the big repair kit for all the equipment. Some spare sliders and zippers for our Hilleberg tent. Different size of zip tie. Spare sections for our click stand. The Anova lapstone for sharpening the knives and scissors and whatever like that. A hand chainsaw. And there's, uh, there's survival tape and fishing equipment and stuff like that. Here's a proofied wax for a brook saddles. We wax them once in a while whenever we feel the saddles are dry. Some match and some birch bark. This is an emergency fire starter. Here we have some glues like a Patex extreme repair glue. This is again a fire starter. Seam grip and some super glue and some silicone seam sealer. And epoxy glue. I put these ones always in a box otherwise they can bend and they break and they go all over the place when it comes to the bicycle touring we are not the lightest but whatever happens to us we have the solution here again my Klattermusen Hoggall hoodie exactly the same model as Matilda's and I'm very happy with it and it's very well made unfortunately Klattermusen they are not making it anymore I don't know why this is my yoke an arctic down sleeping bag it's just a little bit heavier than matilda's bag it's around 800 gram it's made in finland unfortunately yotsen they are not making it anymore but they're really really good if you get one of these i highly recommend to buy it. and here i have one belt it's pretty light some spare spokes and this is some metal so cover it with the plastic and I put it next to the frame and here there are two chisels I really like to work on a cook saw in the evenings when I have a campfire it's one of the most amazing time in my life nothing can beat that I mean something can beat that but it's a sharp object and I put it inside of this plastic tube like this and this one also goes there so it doesn't get into anything my rare right this is a notebook belongs to my godson sometimes i write something for him he is very small around two years old i always carry this one i will give it back to him when we go back to finland this goes to the bottom i got some more more leggings here this is synthetic leggings very lightweight there's no brand i got it from a friend second hand years ago and has been working still here I have a merino wool hoodie. It's a base layer next to a skin from Icebreaker. It has a small percentage of a synthetic mix and it's very comfy. It's not that warm, but it's, it's pretty good. Here I have another base layer from Aklima. This is a warm wool hoodie. It's very warm and very comfortable. And we carry a Hawk Frontier EDX binoculars. It's waterproof, dustproof and fog proof binocular and I really really love looking at the wildlife and the nature and has been really nice to have it it's around if I remember six or seven hundred gram usually I wrap some clothes around it so to keep it safe if we are cycling in a mountain range normally I put it in front because I use it often otherwise it goes to the back then there is a cotton trouser which we made it here my trouser it's not that good but Matilda's trouser is much more better and much comfortable but anyway I'm using it in our spare part kit we have almost spare parts for most of the part of the, our bicycles so whatever breaks down we have a tools to fix it and we have a spare part to replace it we have a two set of jockey pulley one set per bicycle we have a ball bearings for our elix hub park tool tb2 emergency tire boot few set of shiftings and brake cables one extra tube we carry always some spare parts for our Amasax panniers. It's pretty handy to have these spare parts for the panniers because if you have an accident or something, so you can replace the attachment. Attachments are the most vulnerable part in any kind of pannier. So it's good to have some spare attachment. We carry some cool stop brake pads. These are special brake pads for the ride CSS rims. 
but with our first brake pads we've been cycling now around 10,000 km and they will go at least 5 to 10,000 km more we carry some Schwalbe rim tape and a couple of metal clamps a tube repair set a bit of bolt and nuts and we have some spare chain links we carry two spare free hubs for our rear wheel these are for Shimano Elix our bottom bracket needs a special tool so we carry that that's almost about it we have a three tool here this is for opening the cassette this is a German magic tool you can adjust it for any kind of bolt and it's pretty long so I can open the cassette with it or pedals or even if it's needed the bottom bracket and this is a spanner when we want to open and service our Elix rear hubs we need this one if we wrap the cloth around them like this and I put it inside of this paper bag and then goes to the rear pannier I put it close to the frame here we have a two chains we swap our chains each thousand kilometer this is a catadyne a pocket water filter it's an old model it works very well but only a downside with this is after using it drying the ceramic filter inside of it takes a really a long time and if you don't dry it then the ceramic filter will get moldy we have used it only a couple of times this one so far this is my down jacket it's from Klattermusen Alte 2 well to be honest it's very pricey I think the quality and the price doesn't match really so I wouldn't buy it again I highly would do recommend the model Matilda has the Rab Electron it goes to the stuff sack all the clothes and especially the your down clothes or sleeping bag when you put them inside of the pannier and if you don't use it for a long time it's really important once in a while to take them out and let them to dry out in front of sun otherwise they uh, they collect the moisture and they lose the quality this is some grease for a ball bearing we service our rare hub around each 2000 I always put them inside of two plastic bags so in a warm weather in case if they leak they don't go around the bag my laptop's charger and here again we have uh, some bank cards and some ID cards and now my front right pannier this is a rain jacket from Kachua it's a uh, totally nylon it doesn't breathe but it really does the job and no problem but you sweat inside of it quite a lot but it's more waterproof than Gore-Tex ones, definitely. And it costs around, I don't know, 15 euros. Here I got some clothing. The same mittens as Matilda, Merino mittens. These are very lightweight. And fleece gloves, swimming goggles and swimsuit. We haven't used these ones since Europe, but maybe we use them one day. I carry four pair of underwear. Two pair of them are synthetic and two pair of them are Merino synthetic mix from Supernatural. This goes over there. Two pair of synthetic sport socks, very lightweight. A fleece hoodie from Kachua. It was very cheap and it works really good. We have some Merino, Merino hoodies in Finland, but unfortunately when they are 100% Merino, they break down quite easily. So we didn't want to take them to this trip. I carry three t-shirts. Two are Merino, Merino wool t-shirts from Icebreaker. They're starting to get broken down from different places. But these Merino t-shirts, they have a little bit of synthetic mix. They've been lasting pretty good. I'm very happy with them and I would buy it again. And I have a one cotton t-shirt, which now we are washing it. I also have a one shirt with a long sleeve, which got broken recently. I use this one often in the desert, in Sahara and here in Africa when there's a strong sun also in the evenings because of the malaria we use the trousers and we use a long sleeve shirt to cover ourselves as much as possible for cycling most of the time I use this this short it's a normal surfing short and I just here in Gambia I bought this trouser it is 80% cotton and 20% linen and let's see how it will work this is a cycling short from Waude we just have it just in case but we will send it back I think no use for that this is a microfiber towel from a brand called pack towel it's pretty light it dries yeah a little bit faster than normal towels but not really that much fast as they advertise it and here is a uh, one part of our electronic department we have a remote for our sony camera which now matilda is recording with and some charger and some usb cables i got some contact lenses I use daily disposal contact lenses, but I use them for a, maybe one week, two weeks, something like that. 
We have a two waterproof housing for our Sony action cameras. We've been really happy with these Sony action cameras actually. They've been working really good. I put them inside of this kind of glass cover so their front lens doesn't get scratched. Here we got our glasses. These are Matilda's reading glasses. And this is my harmonica. And here there's some notebook. I write some text or whatever. Over my rear rack, I carry this huge art lip duffel bag with the backpack straps. It's 110 liters and as you can see, it's not really full, <laughs> but we like to have the extra space for like food and water in case we need or in case we need to fly or go on a hike or something we can pack more of our stuff in these bags but what i usually carry in my bag is our tent this is the alak 2 and we use the inner mesh instead of the inner tent so here in africa we have actually been using only the mesh and not really the outer layer at all then i have another lightweight backpack from decathlon in this one i have our rain clothes except for our rain jackets you already saw we carry in our front bag these are our rain trousers they are wrap downpour we both have the same it's a Petrex fabric and we try to avoid cycling in these because it wears out the fabric so much but we can use it as an outer layer over our endura trousers if it gets really cold then we each have shoe covers mainly for rain of course but also you, we can use them if it gets super cold we tried to pick like the most durable looking ones we could find they were still cheap and we haven't used them that much so we can't really say how long they will last but so far even i would say surprisingly well these are our waterproof shell mittens mine are from Hestra and payments are Gore-Tex mittens from Extremities. We haven't used these that much, but especially these Hestra ones seems very durable. These Gore-Tex ones on the other hand are a little bit lighter. And also, as mentioned, together with the sweet protection, they make a really good glove. But we haven't tried these in proper rain, so we don't know how waterproof they are. We have a second one of these backpacks. This one we use if we want to, for example, go to the shop without our bikes. We can use this as a shopping bag. We have three MSR dromedary water bags. One 4 liter one and two 10 liter ones. We bought these especially thinking of Sahara, where there can be over 100 kilometers between water points. So we of course use these ones over there and also if you just want to stay in the same campsite for two nights and not have to go and collect water again it's really handy these bags are very very durable but they are heavier than some other options really the only downside we see with these is that it's very annoying to dry them we haven't really found any good way to get them completely dry inside and of course you don't want to leave moisture because you're going to get mold or they're going to get funky also even this four liter bag is an amazing shower so that's another use of these bags i carry our shoes which we used in winter in europe they are Gore-Tex shoes from Trexta together with our merino ski socks in winter these were really warm enough because they are Gore-Tex they keep a little bit of water i worn mine for a few months maybe and they are starting to break there is still a lot of life left in these shoes but they are not that durable and the last thing i pack on my bike is our tripod we really struggled to find a full-size tripod that can handle the weight of our big camera but also doesn't weight a ton and we happened to run into this Bendro tripod in a photoshop in Stockholm so we bought it immediately because this is heavy but not as heavy as all the other tripods we have seen it's very very durable and it has a really great ball head this is big enough to get the camera up to chest height and this is my duffel bag first thing I put inside of it is my slingshot this is really not necessary for bicycle touring but sometimes a little bit train it's really fun our sleeping mats are Thermarest Z light they're really really durable comfortable and warm also we really really like them Matilda have been using this one now for over a one and a half year and this one I have had it maybe for five six years we really prefer these ones over these inflating mats because they never get punctured there's really nothing can go wrong with these ones this is one of our ground sheet foam ground sheet for our tent outer layer of it it's aluminium and we have this one to protect our tent floor from sharp objects or whatever so hopefully lasts longer but our tent floor is already leaking so apparently we will give up this one but it was good to have it for a while 
So the next one is this reusable emergency blanket. It is waterproof and it's been lasting pretty good. We put this one inside of the, our tent on the floor of the tent. And on top of this one, we put our sleeping mats. So this is an extra protection again for a floor of our tent. I carry our tent poles. Hilleberg's poles comes with a extra repair section. We have broken two poles so far. So it's really handy to have extra section, especially if you're going for a long tour. And I carry our tent pegs also. They have been very durable. We are not carrying any extra peg because we can find a piece of wood or something to put there. Only I think is it's good never to use the shoes to press it on the ground. Always good to hammer it with a stone or something. If you use the shoes, it is possible to bend them. We carry three ultralight duffel bags. One is from Ortlip. I think it's a, I think this is 40 liter. We use this one in case if the tent is wet. It's really, really handy to have something like this. So you can pack the tent in case of raining inside of the waterproof bag. So rest of this stuff, like your sleeping mat or I don't know, other stuff inside of the tent, they do not get wet. We also carry two smaller lightweight duffel bags from Outdoor Research. If we are cycling in a rainy season, uh, we do pack our computers or our hard drive inside of these ones just to be in a safe site. We don't want those ones to get wet and we don't use it every day. So it doesn't matter if it's from a lighter material, it's totally fine. I definitely would not take a duffel bag from this material to put it on the back of the bicycle. That will break down thousands of time till today. We put these spongy ropes around our pannier. It keeps the pannier close to the frame and the pannier, they do not rattle when we are on an off-road or in a bumpy road or whatever. We have seen many broken frames and broken racks and one of the reasons of that is this rattling. Rattling is basically you're hammering your frame and your rack. So that eventually, in a long run, it breaks your frame or it breaks your rack. So we are minimizing that risk with these spongy ropes. Then we have our ground sheet for our tent. We put this ground sheet first on the ground. This is waterproof tarp and we bought it in Germany from a gardening shop. It was very cheap, it's very durable and zero problem with this. It's really, really a fantastic thing. This goes here. This guy, I secure it with this spongy cord. As you can see, I put it in a way, this edge of the hook is towards the outside, not inside. I put our solar panel on top. As you can see, it got two spongy rope on the end. Put this spongy rope around the duffel bag in each side. Now there's no way for this to fall. I need to say we've been almost independent from electricity with the solar panels. I carry my computer in a duffel bag. So sometimes in the middle of the day when we have a break, so we do some work. I always pu put it between the foam ground sheet and our sleeping mat. So it's totally in a shock absorber place. Usually we put our raw power battery packs during the day to charge with the, our solar panel. We are very happy with the solar panels and also with these battery packs. As you can see, we end up with a very long cable, which is very handy. I just can put everything inside on the top here. I let this cable out from a corner always and then... Then it's our magical selfie stick. It's a fishing rod. I think now it's around four meter. I also carry a piece of wood. So when I squeeze the clamp, it doesn't break the rod. So now I can squeeze it properly. Then I can put our camera there and yeah, while cycling, record some movie or take a selfie or whatever. It's really handy. So the selfie stick goes here. My training spongy rope. This is all my gym. I really like it. Also, sometimes we put it between some trees or something to hang our clothes. Huh? The next thing I can show you is our water bottles. I carry one Nalgene one and a half liter water bottle. It's really, really good. I highly recommend. And these are our winter socks. So they keep the water bottles cool. This is clean content, two liter water bottle. It's stainless steel. 
we choose this one because we can also boil water inside of it it's durable and it's also very difficult to find any two liter water bottle it's very handy but it is heavy i need to say and then we have another bottle here this water bottle is from Decathlon, it's uh, 750 milliliter and I carry also our MSR windshield here so the windshield stays really really good when you roll it if you fold it, it gets damaged very fast so I carry on my bicycle usually 3.5 liter of water and Matilda has a 2 Nalgene 1.5 liter bottle same as this one and she carries 3 liter of water usually on her bicycle and one from Decathlon for carrying the oil. Let's check out my handlebar band. I usually carry my mobile on the top and I charge it with the, our Igaro Dynamo charger. Then here I carry some spare batteries for our Sony action cameras. Also I carry two spare batteries for our Sony DSLR camera. Have our 4000 milliampere hour Voltioc battery pack. Sometimes if my phone is full, I can charge this one with our Igaro Dynamo hub. Then I carry some USB cables and some USB plug charger. But nowadays we really don't use it. We only use our solar panels. Then I have a two small tripod. One is from brand called Hama. These are for the action camera. This is really useless because it really doesn't stay. I really don't recommend this one. And another tripod we had is this one from brand called Manfrotto from Italy. It has a ball head on the top. This one is very durable, very useful, and even can handle the weight of our big DSLR camera. I highly recommend this one. Then we have a mount for our action camera and our microphone. It's really good and very handy when we are cycling and recording in a windy condition. It's really, really important to be able to have the microphone. Then we have a cleaning cloth for our lens. Then I carry a Leatherman Wave. It's been okay, been working good, but the plier, it's a little bit weak. If we buy it again, we would buy something which has a little bit stronger plier than this. Then I have a two headlamps. One is from Lomonite. It's the model Compass R. It's really, really amazing headlamp. It's very bright. It's 1200 uh, lumens. It's rechargeable, it's waterproof, shockproof. It's really, really one of the best piece of gear we have. Only a downside with this headlamp is it does not have a red light. Also, we carry a very small black diamond headlamp, which has a red light. I don't remember the model, but yeah, it's really light, like nothing. And has been very durable. This one works with the small AA battery. And Lumonite Compass R works with these big batteries. Normally with one charge, we use it at least for a week. And this one, we have been using it every day and almost zero problem. I also carry a fake wallet. It has some expired credit card and identity card and a little bit of money, just in case it's good to have. And here in the net section, I carry MP3 player and some waterproof headphones. And this is also a waterproof MP3 player. This is from Decathlon. It's really nice to have it because we can listen to some music while cycling. And we also are learning a French language with Michel Thomas French course. And I also have my compass with me always. This is a Sunto wrist compass. Very small notebook with a picture of my friends and some contact lace container and small stuff like that. And we have so far have had a two flat and these are the reason we carry them just for a memory. Also, I have some match and some memory card reader for the one of our computer. Our handlebar bag has a pocket. I usually carry a stick called Miswak. I really like this much more than a toothpaste and toothbrush. And in my opinion, it's much more effective actually. And there is a zero waste. There is no plastic involved. Just go to the tree, take it and use it. That goes there. And here I usually carry a pepper spray and a piece of rope and some, some bag, some plastic bag or something. Then we have this clamp for our cameras. This is a very durable and very useful clamp. It's from the brand called Small Rig. It's incredibly durable. This has been like a one and a half year just here and we use it pretty a lot it's really really good this is fully made out of metal and i have had it for years it's a fantastic piece of gear i highly recommend it it's really heavy but it just works and works and works and then the last thing on my bicycle is our basket first thing i have is my knife this is a handmade by myself actually and if you remember i have showed you those leather i have with those leather i will make a sheet 
for this knife whenever I have a time hopefully before South Africa then we have our stove this is a titanium hobo stove from a bushcraft essential this is a LF model it's really really a fantastic stove I really really like it I think it's around 300 gram very small very very durable you can burn wood and i have burned some camel shit in sahara inside of it and some charcoal also it is slower if you compare with the gas stove but we really really like it because it's very ecological it's really light and we just go around and collect some branches like this and that's it you are good to go it comes with a cotton bag then we have a pipe i use this one for blowing to the fire some brushes to clean our drivetrain then i carry my sunglasses it's from decathlon and has been really really nice it's very comfortable on the eyes really i carry also here some food also here i have a chain loop for um, Conex. as a lock we have this one we made it ourselves it's a metal wire we have a loop in the end and a number lock so we can just for example lock the bicycles together as you can see, even they're far, huh? they go. That's all. Then the last thing, it is my cap. It's a piece of art. Matilda doesn't like it at all, but anyway, I have made it. So with this one, I have a protection from any direction sun shines, I have a protection. And in the middle, I made a hole because my brain was really cooking. That's all, you're good to go. It's really important to cover your face in a desert, especially when the sun is strong. So these Crocs are my main shoes and I really haven't used the Gore-Tex shoes. I really like these Crocs. They're secure from in front and they breathe and you can wash them. They're just, they're just perfect. All right. And the last thing is our panniers. Our panniers is from Amasax. We are really happy with them. They've been durable, waterproof and sandstorm proof and has this magnetic buckle, which is really handy and easy. And our handlebar bags are from the same brand, Amasax. They've been pretty durable and waterproof and dustproof. And the bottom line, we would buy it again. Though these are gifted to us by Amasax. So this was everything we carry on our bikes, which is almost everything we own. As you noticed, our bicycles are pretty heavy. The reason is we live on a road, we live on a bicycle, and we go around the world for 10 years, so we need to have equipment which we can trust and we are comfortable. A surprisingly big part of what we carry is also related to our recording and our video making. It's cameras, computers, hard drives, chargers, all that kind of stuff. Also, we do have our winter equipment. The reason is we don't want to send the stuff back and forward always. And it can be that kind of situation during four months, we might face a minus temperature and we might face a plus 40 temperature. And also we carry all the tools and basically all the spare parts we need for our bicycles because we like to be independent and be able to fix anything that happens to the bikes. Some of the equipment we carry, they are pretty basic equipment and some of them are pretty high end. But you can go for adventure with whatever you have it at the home. So never let the equipment hold you back from your adventure. If you like this video, we also made a review video about our bicycles and you can check it out here. And you can watch our latest vlog from Senegal over here. And actually, if you wanted to choose which gear we review the next, you can become our Patreon. You can check out our Patreon by clicking here. Thank you so much everyone for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye. Bye bye.